A great new movie about the rapture has been produced and is being released in theaters this month. It's titled Final, The Rapture. The film was shot in Argentina, Japan, Hawaii, and Los Angeles. It is hard hitting and realistic, complete with all sorts of special effects. Stay tuned for scenes from the movie and an interview with its director. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. My colleague Nathan Jones and I are very excited about our special guest today. He is Tim Che, the director of a great new movie about the rapture. Tim, thanks for coming all the way from Los Angeles <laughs> to be with us here today. It's great being here, Dave, with you and Nathan. <laughs> oh, Absolutely love this show. Good to have you on, too. Thanks, mm -hmm. thanks, Nathan. Hey, we're talking about your movie. Why a movie about the rapture when some people say the rapture is not even in the Bible? You know, I, I can't tell you how many. I was at a Dairy Queen, uh, Nathan, just <laughs> yesterday, and a guy said, uh, Sir, rapture is not in the Bible. Sorry to tell you that. And I said, <laughs> Well, um, if you look in 1 Thessalonians, you look at caught up, and it's rapturos in Latin and, and harpazo in Greek. So, <laughs> Unfortunately, it isn't the Bible. Yeah, they just like rap. I didn't know that. Rapture. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a, it's a timely uh, uh, topic to talk about because so many people, especially the young generation, don't even know about the rapture, mm -hmm. let alone that it's not in the Bible. And I think it's really, really important. You know, that's a very sure. important point because um, uh, Nathan and I have noticed that when we go to prophecy conferences around the nation to speak, wow. we rarely see anybody below the age of 60 even. It's, it's like the whole yeah. young generation is being bypassed about yeah. any teaching about Bible prophecy. Oh, yeah. I mean, the latest poll is only 10% of the nation is actually Christian, true Christians. <laughs> yeah, and I, I just think, man, you know, we've fallen so, so far from where it was even 20 years ago in the 1980s, you know, during the Reagan administration. Well, you must personally have some interest in Bible prophecy yeah. to produce a film about the rapture. Sure, is that oh, true? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I've, I've been studying Bible prophecy since I first got saved. And uh, I, I really believe that if we truly believe we're in the last days, um, we got to act like it. You know, and unfortunately, it's like the fire is happening and we're not even putting it out. Well, so you mentioned when you first got saved. Tell us about your background. Yeah. Well, you know, I got saved late in my life. Um, I was like 35 years old and I was in the Philippines when I got saved. And it was an incredible, you know, for Gideon's, you know, corporation, they always contact me because they want me to speak because <laughs> I got saved through a Gideon's Bible in a hotel. Oh, wow. And it sounds so, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, cliche, but I actually picked up the Bible. I went through the, the questions in the beginning. And, you know, I got down on my knees, I accepted Jesus Christ in a hotel in the Philippines, of all places. Wonderful. <laughs> and, um, and, and I never turned back. And it's just been on fire. And, and David, we were having breakfast uh, this morning, and I, there's a verse in the Bible where Jesus says, those who've been um, forgiven the most love me the most. <laughs> and, um, you know, now I just work, you know, for the kingdom of God just out of gratitude for salvation and not to get any blessings, you know, or anything, even though God has blessed us so much. How in the world did you become a director of movies? Well, you know, I started at USC Film School, you know, oh. uh, when I was 18. And um, when I graduated, I couldn't get a job. You know, the biggest, you know, misconception is you go to a good film school and you'll get a directing <laughs> job. Right now. It doesn't happen. Trust me, you know. Um, in fact, out of my class, only one or two really became film directors. Really? And the rest just ended up just sort of disappearing, you know, either becoming film crew or yeah. not even, you know, getting into film. So I couldn't get a job, and so I ended up going to grad school and worked in a field t totally different from what I'm doing. And, um, and then after I worked you know, for three years, um, I was practicing law, you know, but um, after that I said, you know, I don't have a heart for this. And I was still a secular heathen. So I said, you know, I, I want to start making films, and, and that's what sort of propelled me back into the film. And I, I you know, directed my first film for Universal Studios. And, um, but this that was before me you happiness. were saved, right? Before I was saved. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, but that brought me no happiness. And we were just talking about Corbin Bernstein, a good friend of mine who was in my film, Suing the Devil, and he had no happiness after L.A. Law. And now he has a giant cross on the front of his, of his door, <laughs> and he's saved, totally, totally a, a sold-out believer. Nathan. So, um, yeah, uh, uh, you know, you see so many things in Hollywood and actors coming to Christ, and it's a great time for Harvest. But the workers are few. That's well, the thing. I love what you said earlier about how all the people that, you would it, 16,000 people tried out for yeah. this, and they all read the script, they all got the gospel message. Yeah. You have a 
a, a mission field unheard of <laughs> oh, to yeah. actors. Right? Sure. Oh, no, it's it's an incredible yeah. harvest in Hollywood. And they are the media influencers, too much like you guys are. And if we get them, they can get their other people saved. You know, much like an actor friend of mine who uh, is good friends with Robert De Niro. And we got him saved on the set, and now he's she's pitching the gospel to Robert De Niro. <laughs> so we're one heart speed away from the gospel to anybody we want. Uh, but uh, I was astounded when you told me that you had uh, uh, reviewed uh, sixteen thousand actors for this uh, wonderful film called Final the Rapture. Uh, there must be a lot of hungry actors in Los Angeles. Oh, there are lines. They're, whenever we cast, I mean, you see lines of actors around the entire casting building just with they're holding the script, and you kind of feel sorry for them because you really want to give them work. You know, especially as a Christian, but um, there are very few Christian actors, believe it or not, out there. And we want to work with Christian actors. It's just that there's very few that go into Hollywood, now, and I think that's a mistake. Those interviews were not sure. all in Los Angeles, were they? Were they in the other areas where you yeah. also uh, oh, filmed? Sure. Because we, this yeah. film is shot in uh, Los Angeles, Hawaii, Argentina, and yeah. Japan, right? Yep. That's absolutely right. Amazing. Dude. It's amazing. amazing. Yeah. I want to come back to that point in just sure. a few minutes. But uh, first of all, let's just uh, pause here and then we'll come back and talk about sure. the movie itself. Thanks for the background about you. Oh, sure do. Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy and our interview of Tim Che, the director of the new movie Final The Rapture, which is a film about the rapture. Tim, I. Uh, <laughs> I, I tell you, when I saw this film, the first thing that impressed me was the quality of it, uh, the quality of the, uh, uh, of the filming, of the directing, of the script and everything. And the reason that impressed me so much is because over the years I've seen many quote unquote Christian films that were produced with great dedication and, and uh, with great zeal, but they were very, very low budget and they just came across sometimes as totally hokey or whatever. And, and this, this one is very different. Now, you shot this in Hawaii, long Los Angeles, Argentina, and Japan. And I noticed at the end that you had a different film crew in each area. Now that adds up to a lot of money. How in the world were you able to raise the funds for this film? Well, we were very fortunate, uh, you know, David and Nathan, that um, we had Christians who were wealthy Christians and they were evangelical Christians. Awesome. And that's a very hard combo to get a wealthy evangelical Christian, you know? <laughs> They're few um, and far between. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Lord <laughs> must have led you to them. He did. It was yeah. out of the blue. We got it because we had just gone through a disappointment where this Indian chief that runs a billion dollar tribe. I flew from Hawaii all the way to Canada, and um, I told the guy, "Are you sure? Because I'm flying all the way from Hawaii to Canada, you know, to meet with right. the tribe." He said, "Tim, we're going to put 10 million into this movie. Um, you know, wow. we just want you to know it's a done deal." I fly all the way over there. They pick me up two hours to their tribe, and the guy says, "Oh, we just had a meeting. We decided not to do your film." <laughs> oh. oh. So it was very devastating, and you know, we, we meet these kind of people all the time, but. Right two months later, we get a phone call, and it was one of my friends who had invested in our other film called Suing the Devil. And that's the one with Corbin Burns in and Malcolm McDowell. And they had invested, they did very well with it, and he said, I want to put um, some, you know, some yeah. serious cash in. So they flew my wife and I to Australia. Whoa. And um, picked us up in a limo, which was a little <laughs> bit better than the Indian tribe. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and then he said, we want to put in millions into um, your movies. Praise and, the Lord. Um, you know, you guys have been doing good. You have, you've, you've shown this movie now in a number of theaters across the nation. In fact, you're on your way right now to Florida for the opening of the movie in theaters there yeah. uh, in January. Sure. Uh, when this program is going to be shown to the nation. So, uh, let me ask you this. What has been the response of people, of the audience? to your movie. Well, one story in the news was a woman came out of the theater uh, for Final the Rapture, and um, this was in Houston, and she came out shaking. And mm. my wife saw her in the lobby, and she pointed the pastor to her, and the pastor led her to Christ. And she got on <laughs> wow. her knees in the middle of the lobby. <laughs> and people wow. thought this was crazy, and this woman came and said, What's going on here? You know, it's like a baptism revival, and I know it's just a, a Christian film that um, you know that the Lord has led us to do. Well, your website and, has a video where people can watch and see people's responses as they're coming oh, out of the theater, oh, which is you. fantastic, and they're all coming out like, "Wow, I didn't know this," or "It really moved me." Sure, I mean, yeah. this this video is this movie. Plus, it's is a very hard hitting film. Lives, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it is. It is, yeah. and it's just it's just the Lord because you know, First Corinthians says, "I become all things to all men." 
to win some to Christ, to the weak I become weak, to the strong I become strong. And in actuality, we are going to the weak, the moviegoers. You know, and I think it was a mistake of the Christian church since the 1940s. They should have competed with Hollywood and got in there yes. and mixed it up with them because um, we're seeing so much fruit, you know, altar calls, people using it to bring people to Christ. And well, I was impressed uh, wow, with every aspect of the film, the quality, uh, particularly with the acting. I mean, you have some really fine actors. That were, are they all professionals? Yeah, yeah, they all are. Um, we cast it in Hollywood, um, which, uh, you know, is the capital of casting. And, and some of these, movie. I think, are outstanding actors in their countries, like Argentina and Japan, right? Oh, yeah. yeah the the Argentina Argentina was great. It, 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 she's a big TV actress, and it's funny, because wherever we went, people were trying to get her autograph. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hindered the filmmaking process. We said, well, get the autographs after. Well, the, the uh, Japanese actor you have, the lead Japanese actor, yeah. has been in major Hollywood films. Yeah, he's he plays a general in Iwo, uh, Letters to Iwo Jima, the Clint yeah. Eastwood movie. Oh, yeah. okay. It's interesting how he talks about how Clint Eastwood directed him. It's just amazing. <laughs> I mean, he's a great, phenomenal director. He's one of my favorite directors, yeah. too. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, the, the, the actor that impressed me the most in the whole film was the professor oh, from yeah, Los yeah. Angeles. He's yeah. yeah. arrogant. <laughs> you know, just, he, I, I got so mad at that guy, <laughs> I wanted to choke him. And that's when I realized how good an actor he was. Yeah, now, is he sure. a professional actor? Yeah, he's, he's a very big actor. And, uh, you know, um, we're, we're just, we were blessed to have him. He's also a sold-out believer. Yeah. And it's very hard, like we were talking that about, to get a talented, sold-out believer to be in your film. And it's, it's hard just... to believe he's a believer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, he behaves in that film like a, a Richard, I, I thought I was watch, watching Richard Dawkins, the world's number one <laughs> atheist. Kind of right? looks like him, too. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> he reminded me of some of my professors from when I was at Penn State. Right. Oh, I mean, just yeah. totally hostile to yeah. the gospel. Oh, yeah. Did Brother, you work him up to be that way? Yeah, you know, actually, we shot um, in some of the major universities, you know, to get uh, uh, and it was incredible. We had real students who, who were, um, you know, on the borderline between being atheists and believers. And they saw, you know, the movie interaction, the extras, and they saw him and they thought he was an atheist. And then he <laughs> actually turned around and said, no, I'm a believer. I just, I'm just playing an atheist. But, um, convincing. you know, you know, he's very convincing. Yeah. And Well, brother, I just praise God for you and, and for many reasons, but one in particular, and that is, as I told you earlier in a private conversation, I go all over the world in the, in the, history of this ministry. I've been all over the world. And I know that whenever I go to a foreign country with Africa, Asia, Latin America, and I turn that TV set on in that uh, hotel room, I'm going to see the most lewd, blasphemous, uh, sexual, uh, violent films and TV programs all made in USA. We are the moral polluter of planet Earth. And I'm just glad to see someone who's dedicated to making films that, that inspire and uplift. Uh, your feelings about Hollywood these days? Well, I agree with you 100 percent, Dave. In fact, um, you know, on the airplane, now, um, you, you, you know, they force you to, to, to lower your blinds and watch their garbage, oh. you know, and we try to put our Christian movies on those airplanes and they want to ha have anything oh. to do with it. And I think it's very fascinating that, you know, this country was founded by, you know, believers, right. the pilgrims. Right. And yet they, they take the tradition and they throw it out the door and they say, no, we're going to, you, you are forced to watch our garbage, but we cannot have anything. It's even the magazines when you stand in the checkout counter. Mm -hmm. you, you're, we're forced to see the National Enquirer. But if, if put a Christian magazine, we'll be sued by, you know, the minority groups. He took so. his kids to a Toys R Us wow. uh, about a year ago. To, wow. As they're checking out, they walk by a magazine stand. Oh. There on the magazine stand was a latest copy of Archie comic books. And on the cover, on the cover oh. was a drawing of a same-sex marriage oh. on an Archie yeah. comic book. Yeah, it, it's, well, you know, the thing is, you know, David, we were talking about this earlier is, you know, we're in Sodom and Gomorrah right now, right? And we're in the last That's days. Right. So it, it's hard to reverse that. I, I almost would be like, you know what? We can't have it both ways, right? We can't have the rapture happening and it's, it's glorious more moral <laughs> time in America, you know? Sad but yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, you know. That's true. The 1950s would have been a great time for the rapture to happen, <laughs> but I think the Lord is showing us, you know, the, the degradation, degradation of, of our country. Well, it's let's just pause here for a moment and let's let our viewers take a look at the incredible trailer that you have put together for this film. Sure. Okay, welcome back, everybody. We are going to make some fantastic eggs today. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to boil two eggs. Good morning, everyone. We have breaking news from downtown L.A. We have several unconfirmed reports that several hundred people have vanished. Yes, that's right, have vanished throughout the city.
Wow, Tim, that was an intense trailer. I, I just loved seeing that again and again, especially the professor is he's sitting on the island. He's, he's yelling, I can't believe this is happening. And I'd imagine <laughs> after the rapture, there'll be a lot of people yelling, I can't believe this is happening. Oh, yeah. I mean, he just heard that from the news segment where they said, um, you know, the stock market crashed, you know, um, all his bank savings. Are, they're, they're basically shutting down the banks and they're allowing only like $25 a day or something out, you know, something crazy like that. But I think that's what's going to happen. I think it's going to be total chaos, and the banks are going to be just completely the first to go. And if that happens, then people are going to be panicking. Oh, yeah. They're going to be like, well, I want to withdraw all my money, right? Because you want oh, to just yeah. run on the banks. Yeah. And I yeah. think uh, people will be saying that very same thing, particularly those who may have heard, uh, been Ooh, taught about the rapture. Yeah. Maybe their husband, their wife, they heard a preacher on TV or whatever, yeah. and they're going to say, sure. I can't believe this is really <laughs> happening. <laughs> oh. Well, the first thing I would do if the rapture happened, and I was a lukewarm believer, is I would go to the bank and withdraw everything and get out of the United States. Mm -hmm. I would try to get like to Fiji. You know, I would go to some remote place where I cannot be touched by the evil. And unfortunately, <laughs> that's what happens to the professor. He's on this remote island. <laughs> and not he's by touched. choice. Yeah. <laughs> that would explain then why the football player was so hot to get out of the country right. that he was trying to escape. Well, uh, oh, yeah, uh, well yeah, seriously, yeah. what kind of explanations do you think will be given for the rapture? Because the government's going to try to explain this away. Oh, I think there's only one explanation. I think they're going to say some alien alien being yeah. um, zapped them. That has to be the only way that can explain disappearances. Uh, I think I think so too in terms of a logical explanation. Now there are going to be other explanations, I'm sure. sure one that sure. comes to mind was back in the early 1970s, the uh, leaders of the New Age movement in the United States called a press conference and they announced that the masters of the universe who are the, their name for the demons they channel with. They said, the master of the universe have revealed to us that a time is coming soon when those who live by faith will be taken off the earth so that those who live by reason can continue in their evolutionary development. <laughs> wow. And I remember that so clearly. That was back in the early 70s. And I, I have no doubt that when this happens, those guys will rush to the microphone and say, see, we sure. told you, we yeah. told you. And it's sure. now happened. That, but that will be appealed to the people who are more spiritually inclined, I guess. But the explanation I think the government will give will probably be aliens. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think, though, it's going to be a harvest. You know, I agree with John MacArthur when he says it's going to be probably, and, and also many other pastors, that's going to be the greatest evangelical harvest ever. Oh, um, yeah. So. Right. There was one lady in particular, there's a lot of lines that I thought were really great, but as in Argentina, there was an older woman <laughs> walking with the main woman up the stairs, and, and she says, well, I'm a Christian, and since I'm a Christian, this, this couldn't be the rapture, because I would have gone, right? <laughs> There's going to be lots of people left behind who think they're Christians, but what, what's the difference? Why aren't they raptured with the other people, even though they say they're Christians? Well, you know, it's interesting that you say that, Nathan, because, you know, a lot of pastors are coming to a conclusion, and this is, you know, based on even my travels, you know, um, around the world, um, that I'll, probably the majority of Christians are going to be left behind. And I thought, well, you know what, that's kind of shocking, you know. Mm. And, How about and pastors as well? <laughs> Possibly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, we won't go into which ones, but uh, yeah, I agree with you, David. Yeah. And I think, um, I think uh, you know, I agree with maybe one of uh, the excerpts of, of a best-selling book that says, well, lukewarm Christians are an oxymoron. You're not going to see lukewarm Christians in heaven. And mm -hmm. that's because of the Revelation 1 where it says, I will spit lukewarm Christians out of my mouth. Yeah. You know, and then Jesus, of course, is the most shocking thing in, in Matthew when he says, um, I don't know who you are. You, evan you evangelize, you cast out demons, mm -hmm. but depart from me. I don't know who you are. And do, do non-believers cast out demons? <laughs> do they evangelize? He's talking to believers who think they're believers. Well, so many people so, think that they're, they're Christians 
Christians simply because, let's say, they've gone through baptism or they go to church maybe once a month or their name's on a church roll or something like this. And I call these cultural Christians. They really have no right. personal relationship with Jesus that's Christ. Right. That's right. And, and, and that's what salvation is all about. Yeah. Yeah. A personal relationship with the Savior of this world. And in fact, yeah, that's absolutely right, David. In fact, they may not even be Christians. So we, we've seen them say that they're lukewarm because yeah. they're not even Christians to begin with. That's so true. I mean, yeah, anybody so. can claim to be a Christian. I, it's, <laughs> like, it's like standing in a garage and saying, I'm an automobile. Well, I'm not. I'm, you <laughs> yeah, know, that's I a just, good point. Uh, right. I can say that, but it doesn't make me one because right. I'm standing in a garage. Yeah. Any That's more so than right. I'm standing in a church saying I'm a Christian. Well, I, I think a lot of them, you know, a lot of them are cultural. They grew up, you know, like you said in the movie, um, the character probably just grew up thinking, well, I was baptized when I was two, yeah. you know, and, and I, I must be a Christian and blah, blah, blah. But they don't live or have any repentance of their sins. They don't have a relationship with Jesus. In fact, public opinion polls are now showing that even among uh, uh, evangelicals. Uh, many say, well, Jesus sinned and Satan's not real and there's many roads to heaven and all this sort of thing. In fact, they're showing that only about 9% of all the people in America are true Bible believing Christians. Yeah, that's really sad. And, and it, it may even be smaller, you know, we don't know. But I know when Jesus says, I'm coming back and where am I going to find faith? Yes. I think that's yeah. an extremely, you know, apropos statement. Well, it certainly about, makes like, it apparent that one of the richest uh, uh, evangelistic fields are churches themselves. <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. yeah. <laughs> well, at least your movie gave the encouragement. You know, it started off that, oh, a hundred are missing, then, oh, a thousand. Then they're realizing millions are missing. And yeah, I pray that yeah. millions will be going to heaven. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, we have to be yeah. praying for that, too. I mean, no one wants to be here for the Great Tribulation. That's right. And that's, Goodness. it's going to be Well, nice. is this film going to be released uh, in theaters or is it going straight to video? Well, it's been, it's been in theaters. Okay. And it's going platform, city by city. And uh, we're going to be in Florida next. Um, so, as people watch this movie, right, or watch this TV show right now, it's the movie's in theaters. Okay. Um, so but, people Florida, can, but people can get copies of the video, right? That's exactly right. We're making the advanced screeners available to the general public for just a limited time. Yeah, okay. So, uh, they can see the whole movie on yeah. that as well. And right. it raises money for us because um, to be in each city is about 25000 in advertising. Yeah. So, um, let's see, we're going to be in uh, Orlando, Melbourne, Fort Lauderdale. Each one is 25000 in newspaper and TV buys. Um, so, it, it's a great way to, to sort of generate and, and, you know, keep going. Well, folks, uh, you need to go to the website uh, where this movie is uh, featured. What is the website address? Uh, they can just watch Final. Yeah. See Final.com, watch Final.com. Okay. Uh, type in Final. Type in Final the Rapture and you'll find the website and you can see where it's going to be screened in, in your area. Uh, so do that. This is a film you must see. Welcome back to our interview with Tim Che, the director of a exciting new film called Final the Rapture. Tim, as we bring our program to a close, I first of all want to thank you again for being with us. You've just been a great blessing. Oh, and blessing uh, I would here. like for you to look directly into that camera sure. there and uh, say a few words to those who are watching who may not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior and sure. just sort of summarize the message of your movie to those who do not know Jesus. Well, thanks a lot, David. And first off, thank you for having me on the show. Okay. It's a great show and I'm a fan of it. Um, I guess to the audience, I just want to say this. I started as an atheist, and then I became a believer at 36 years old. Um, I'm now 48. Um, and I want to let you guys know one thing. The next great event of the church is going to be the rapture. And it's not a joke. It's something that you have to take very seriously, because when the rapture happens, it's going to be chaos, and it's going to be tribulation like the world has never known, like in Revelation 1. So, uh, this is the time to get serious with God. If you're a lukewarm believer, it's a time to say, you know what, am I really saved? You know, do I really have a relationship with Jesus Christ? If I'm not a believer, it's a time to really get serious and say, you know what, I'm going to read the Bible. And, and I encourage you to read everything to get closer to God, because God promises if you draw closer to Him, He'll draw closer to you and get you to the right path. But um, as David mentioned, uh, one of the reasons why we made the film is because we want to have um, both sides of the issue. God is a God of love. He loves you desperately and He wants to bring you to Him. But He's also a God of judgment. And you can't have both. You can't have, I mean, you have to have both. You can't have one being loving and let sin go. 
So um, this is a movie about God's coming judgment on the world. And it's a righteous judgment. It's, he's not being mean-spirited in any way because he loves you. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you a horrible death. He's not mean-spirited. But he has to be righteous. And this righteousness is the rapture, which will be the church will be vanished and will be taken up in the first stage of the second coming. And it's in the Bible because it's rapturos in Latin and harpazo in Greek in, um, in um, First Thessalonians, first Thessalonians four, yeah. caught up. And, uh, and so it is biblical. And Billy Graham, J. Vernon McGee, John MacArthur, thousands of Bible scholars believe in the rapture of the church. And so don't let anyone dissuade you that it's not in the Bible. And it is going to be the next great event of the church. So as my friends David and Nathan share every week or day on, on this program, please come to Christ now. Don't wait another day. Thank you so much, Tim. It has been a great blessing, man. Thanks, Nathan. Thank you God so much. You it's been an honor being here. Awesome. Well, folks, that's our program for this week, and I hope it's been a blessing to you as well. And I hope you'll be back with us next week. Until then, this is Nathan Jones speaking for Dr. David Reagan and myself saying, look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus. Jesus.